When we negotiated and accepted the nuclear deal, we did it with open eyes. Iran negotiated it based on distrust. That's why in Article 36 we predicted some ways to compensate illegal acts of the other sides, and now we are taking those measures. But it was crucial for us to show that we are looking for solutions, still looking for solutions, and based on the other side's commitments, we are committed to the deal. Many of uh, the uh, G7 uh, members, um, which, uh, which will be attending the summit in Biarritz this weekend, of course, will have been concerned by the rise in tensions in the Gulf. Certainly, uh, the European partners of Emmanuel Macron uh, eager to try to uh, keep this nuclear deal alive. But whether the American side, in the uh, form of President Trump and security adviser John Bolton, will actually take this idea, this initiative, and run with it at the G7, whether it will go anywhere, uh, is hard to predict. So far, they've accused France of sending mixed messages to Tehran through its diplomacy efforts. So uh, it's really not clear what's going to happen. Nadim, thank you very much indeed. I want to bring in Simon Mabon. He's a senior lecturer in international studies at Lancaster University. He's joining us from there. Thank you very much indeed for your time. How significant is it that the two sides are actually talking, Thanks for irrespective me. of whether or not they actually come up with some sort of solution? I think it's hugely significant and also symbolic. I think you can't have a diplomatic resolution to a crisis without dialogue. That much we know. And so the, the fact that these two prominent officials are sitting down together and talking is an incredibly important first step. It sends a good message to other members of the, of the nuclear deal. And it sends a strong message to the United States that European powers are fighting to save the deal. So there's the symbolic dimension, but there's also uh, a really important substantive dimension that there are talks going on. The, the French know what the Iranians are thinking and what their concerns are, and the Iranians know what the French concerns are. So it's something to, to really build on, and it's a platform to try and move forward from this, working within the parameters of the deal and working to keep the deal. And President Macron has said that he wants to try to, in some way, soften the blow of the sanctions or offer compensation to the Iranian people. We don't have any details, yes, of course, but, but at the same time, do you have any indication or any idea how he might be able to get, do this and get round the U.S. sanctions that are in place? Well, we know that there's a, a trading house, essentially, that's been established by the Europeans that was designed to get around U.S. sanctions called Instex. And, and this was designed to allow for, for the Iranian economy to try and work without the, the fear of U.S. sanctions and allow companies to trade with, with Iran. Of course, it's, it's limited to essential humanitarian goods. So this is one of the ways around it, although there isn't all that much confidence in it yet. It's something that, that could possibly work. But I think the other thing that, that must be stressed is that we have to have a degree of trust here. And that trust has been dramatically broken with the US withdrawal from the deal. And so I think what Mr. Macron is trying to do here is say, look, we want the deal to continue. Saying to the Iranians, we want it to continue and we want you to continue working within it. So we need to make it better for you and we need to make things better for you to stop this incredibly harsh US sanctions biting. And so that's what they're trying to do, find different ways of, of Iran actually operating and getting some money and, and, and really trying to alleviate the incredibly devastating economic uh, sanctions and the impact that those sanctions are having on the Iranian people. In the event that they are able to come up with some sort of agreement, some sort of understanding that uh, President Macron is able to present to the G7 this weekend, how do you think the US is going to react? Not particularly well, to be honest. I think um, the U.S. position is incredibly clear. It's been explicit. We know that, that Donald Trump has called this, uh, this nuclear deal the worst deal of all time for, for whatever reason, be it self-interest or, or be it the thought that it didn't do enough to stop the Iranian nuclear program or it didn't do enough for U.S. interests. We know that that's the U.S. position, and I think it would be highly unlikely for Trump and, uh, and John Bolton and others involved at the, the highest levels of the administration to actually soften their stance. And so that means that it's up to European powers to figure out a way of saving the deal without the U.S. being involved and figure out a way of, of allowing the Iranian economy to, to prosper in the face of these crippling U.S. sanctions. And that's where I think the United Kingdom has a huge role to play here. 
We know that Boris Johnson has been playing sort of both sides in essence, but he's got a really big role to play. If he is serious about saving the deal, the, the nuclear deal, then he has to stand up and, and side with the Europeans. Of course, he's trying to negotiate Brexit at the same time, so that might be easier said than done. Really good to uh, have, get your opinion on this. Simon Mabon, thank you very much indeed for your time.